In the 60s, after the Valdivia tsunami, the work regarding tsunami warning systems for the Pacific Ocean began. Since then, Japan started a tsunami mitigation plan. In 2004, the earthquake in Indonesia was the most devastating event in terms of human life losses due to tsunamis in the recent decades. In 2010, after the Maule earthquake, despite the failure of the official tsunami warning and emergency response systems, there was an adequate evacuation plan which has reduced the number of fatalities from the tsunami. Earthquakes happen all the time since the very existence of the Earth due to the constant energy release from its core. This causes some tectonic plates to move onto each other and the big friction between them causes large amounts of energy to get stored. The friction which is accumulated when a plate is going down another is freeing energy which is generating waves in deep waters which could become tsunamis. The tectonic plates are responsible for the generation of the largest number of tsunamigenic earthquakes. We have to make a distinction between the epicenter of an earthquake and rupture area that defines the initial condition of the tsunami. The sudden movement of the plates and the release of this energy finally generates seismic waves that propagate rapidly, producing earthquakes. At the same time, this movement produces a disturbance in the ocean surface that propagates in the form of tsunamis. Unlike seismic waves, tsunamis can spread thousands of kilometers, causing damage on a global scale. As tsunamis travel in water, their speed varies as the depth changes. This is the concept of refraction. The tsunami can propagate at the speed of an airplane in the middle of the deep ocean and slow down when approaching the coast, while increasing its amplitude, getting slower than a car or even a person. How long does it take for a tsunami to travel from Indonesia to Africa and from Chile to Alaska? With Tsunami Lab, answer this yourself using your own hands and learn how tsunamis really are.